Once there was a blind girl. Her name was Elisa. She was a poor girl. Her mother and father died in a landslide. She lived alone in a small hut. Elisa had a beautiful little garden. In the garden, she grew carrots, turnips, and white radish. She sold them to the villagers for bread. The villagers were very considerate of her. They brought her clothes and food when she didn't have anything to wear or eat. But no one ever invited her to their home. No one visited her when she fell ill. Other girls wouldn't make friends with her. She was very alone. One day, she was sewing her clothes. Someone knocked on the door. She looked at the door. Who is there? she exclaimed, but nobody answered. The door was knocked again. She inquired again, who is at the door? Nobody answered. The door knocked the third time. She stood up and headed towards the door. Who is there? she repeated. This time, there was silence. She remained motionless for a minute. But no one spoke from the outside. She returned to her bed. As she took a few steps forward, the door knocked again. This time it was knocked violently. She got scared. Then there was silence. Suddenly, she heard the window opening. Someone walked into the room. She became even more terrified. She was blind. She couldn't see who came inside. The person who entered got close her. She could sense someone standing next to her. She was frozen in place. The person grabbed her right hand. He walked her to the door. He opened the door and drove her outside. Elisa was scared. She had no idea who the person was. She cried, Who are you? The person kept quiet. He led Elisa into the forest. She asked, Where are you taking me? Who are you? The person gripped her hand even tighter and remained silent. Elisa got even more scared. She thought she was being kidnapped. Then she felt a rush of cold air around her. She could hear the sound of running water and birds. She could feel rocks beneath her feet. She sobbed, Where am I? What is this place? The person put his hand in the water. He cupped water in his hands and threw it on Elisa's face. She screamed. The water felt very warm. She felt her face burning. The person who was there fled. After a few minutes, she opened her eyes. Her face was hurting. But she could see now. She looked around. Around her, there were lovely trees. There was a lovely waterfall in front of her. Its water was crystal clear and had a pleasing aroma. The birds were twittering. Their melody flew high above the trees. She said to herself, Everything is so beautiful here. What is this place? She touched her eyes. She was awestruck. She could see now. She felt very happy. Her face was no more burning. She turned around. She made her way through the rocks, big and small, towards the trees. For a while, she wandered here and there. She completely forgot about the person who drove her there. She sat in the shade of a tree. She saw a squirrel. The squirrel ran towards the waterfall. Elisa followed the squirrel. Elisa followed the squirrel as it went behind the waterfall. It was dark behind it. She couldn't see anything. She stepped forward. Then she noticed a light in the distance. She walked towards the light. She couldn't see the squirrel. She kept on moving slowly. When she got to the end of the tunnel, she noticed two more. One to the left and the other to the right. 
The left tunnel was dark. But there were small holes in the wall of the right tunnel. The light was streaming through the holes. She entered the right tunnel. She looked inside one of the holes. She got amazed. She saw a lovely room. It had four chairs and a table in one corner. In the other corner, there was a bed with a side table. On the side table was a beautiful lamp. A carpet was laid on the floor in the center of the room. The carpet had a floral pattern. The room had beautiful lights hanging from the roof. She could smell the fragrance of roses. Then, she took a step back. She walked through the tunnel. Suddenly, her foot hit something. It was a small box. She picked it up. She opened the box. It had a dead squirrel inside. She was shocked. She placed the box on the floor. She thought, it's the same squirrel I ran after. Who could have killed her? She got cautious. A few drops of water fell on her head. She quickly looked up. But, the roof was not leaking. She looked down at the box. She was in shock again. The squirrel wasn't there. She took a quick look at everything in the tunnel. The squirrel was nowhere. The box was empty. She thought, I should go back. This place looks strange. When she turned around, she saw a large wall behind her. She got scared. She couldn't go back now. She dashed to the opposite end of the tunnel. There were no more tunnels. However, on the left, there was a large hole. She felt the wall falling on her from behind. She got scared and jumped into the hole. For three minutes, she kept falling. She tripped and got her head hit on something hard. She became unconscious. It was getting dark now. Everywhere it was silent. When she opened her eyes, she found herself in her bed. The door and the window were still open. A small candle was burning on the table beside her. She thought, I must be dreaming all this time. It was a scary dream. Then she went to the door and shut it. She also shut the window. But as she went to her bed to sleep, her eyes grew big. She grabbed her face in her hands and cried, If that was a dream how could I see? I was a blind girl, but now I can see. Her head was still hurting. She couldn't sleep the whole night. The next morning as she went out, she saw a village woman coming. The woman was holding something in her hand. She thought, I didn't have anything to eat today. I was so hungry. She must be carrying food in her hand. As the village woman entered the garden, she screamed, the basket fell from her hands, and she ran away. Elisa watched the woman run away in amazement. She didn't understand why the woman got scared. She looked back. There was no one standing behind her. She stepped forward and picked up the basket. She went inside and closed the door behind her. At 11 a.m., she heard the villagers calling her outside. She touched her face. It felt rough to her. She knew there was something wrong with her face. But she gathered some courage and went outside. All the villagers stepped back. They began whispering in each other's ears. One of the villagers took a step forward. What happened to your face? The villager inquired. I don't know. I could feel it burning yesterday. But why is that? Is there a problem with my face? Elisa responded. The villagers reasoned that because she was blind, she couldn't have seen her own face. That day the villagers went back to their homes. But the next morning they get together at one place. She looked horrible. The old woman was right about her. 
She is the devil's child, and she is now maturing into it, said the villager. What should we do about her now, said the other villager. How about we throw her in the river, said another villager. After half an hour of discussion, the villagers decided to poison her. The villagers decided to carry out their plan in the evening. Four villagers went to her hut to give her food. They saw the door was open. One of the villagers peeked inside. She is not here, said the villager. Where has she gone? asked the other villager. They began looking for her. But she was nowhere to be found. The villagers returned home and told their neighbors about it. Three years passed and Elisa didn't come back home. With time, it became famous in the village that the big devil had taken her to his devil house. Some people say that she has turned into a complete devil and now she lives with bad people. Some claim that she was innocent and now she lives in a beautiful place and looks very beautiful.